can ditch all this and you will be a better hiker. What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. Today we're talking about the things that you can ditch from your backpack, lighten your load, go farther, and have more fun on the trail. Let's break it down, starting now. Before we move on, I wanna give a quick shout out and thanks to Mystery Ranch. They are a sponsor here at Backpacking TV and it's awesome to work with a company that you really believe in. They make amazing backpacks and I have just loved their backpacks for years. So if you're interested in a great hiking backpack, whether it's for backpacking or day hiking, check out mysteryranch.com and they'll get you kitted out. Let's talk about all the things that you can ditch from your backpack to lighten your load and have an improved experience on the trail. I am a notorious overpacker, but as I've started shedding my weight and going a little bit lighter, I have definitely noticed a difference. So I wanna talk about some of the things that I think you, especially for the new hikers and new backpackers out there, can ditch before they get to become, oh, almost 40 years old and still carrying some of this stuff. Okay, let's start with one of the basics. This is a tent footprint. And I actually haven't been a backpacker with a footprint for, I don't know, eight years. The main reason why people use footprints are, I think two reasons. One is to prevent wear and tear on their expensive gear, like their tents. They don't want holes being ripped in their tents. So it's totally normal, justifiable purchase if you have a delicate tent or you really want your one tent to go an extra two or three years, this will reduce the abrasion. However, I find that I just don't need it. The other use that this has is it can be an additional moisture barrier to help prevent moisture coming up from the ground and getting into your tent overnight. But what I've found over the years is that I simply just don't need this. It is just something else to think about, something else to pack. It can maybe have some extra uses. You could put gear on it or I don't know. I haven't really found this to be that helpful, so I stopped carrying it. Now, is it all that heavy? No, it's probably like four ounces, but still, shedding any weight is always a plus when you're backpacking or hiking. The only time I'd really advocate for carrying this is if you have a very delicate tent and you're going to be hiking and camping in places that have a lot of sharp rocks or things like that, and you're gonna be camping directly upon rocks. This will reduce the likelihood that your tent floor is actually going to shred. So in that case, maybe I'd bring one, but otherwise, Leave it at home. Similar kind of thing. This is a rain fly. And now, back in the days of yore, when I first started backpacking, having a rain fly was pretty standard and I always backpacked with one. However, even in extreme rain events, it didn't really matter. I've still found that my gear got wet. So yes, it's helpful in a light spritz, I would say. When it's a downpour, you need something else. What I carry instead is things that will keep my gear dry inside my backpack. So I don't really care if the actual fabric of the backpack itself gets wet, although that will add a little bit of extra weight if the fabric is very wet. One of the cheapest of all solutions is just a trash bag. So you can put this inside your backpack, stuff your clothes, stuff your sleeping bag, and this is a essentially not free, but it costs only pennies and it weighs almost nothing and it has just about no bulk. And of course, you can always just use it as a trash bag. You could make a little poncho out of it. It has other uses and I, generally speaking, like to have at least one trash bag with me and then I will also have some other internal dry bag storage, such as dry bags or things like a Packstack Pro that I really like as well. This one's a little bit more technical, but I have found zero uses for solar panels. So if you are hiking with a solar panel, maybe you wanna be charging your phone or something as you hike, you know, kind of drape it off of your, your backpack as you're hiking on the trail. I just really don't find them useful, hardly at all. And this goes in tandem with battery banks. And I just find that it's better if you're going off trail for two to four days, just put your phone on airplane mode when you hit the trailhead and you know maybe occasionally when you need to check messages. But otherwise, this thing weighs like 14 ounces. That's almost a pound. I think this is almost a pound. Now there are lighter options that have evolved over the years, but still the point being, you really don't need to be carrying 
a lot of technology, a lot of just battery technology. So ditch the solar panels, and I like to ditch the battery banks as well. If you are a phone, heavy duty phone user, one of the things, and I personally do actually rely on my phone for, well, maybe not rely, but I use my phone for navigating. So one of the things that I will do before I go is I'll download my maps, go into whatever map service you like, and make sure that while you're on cell signal or Wi-Fi, you download the map that you want, and then it will be ready for you in offline mode. So you don't need any cell connection at all in order to be able to use it. So if you are still navigating or counting on your phone for getting around, getting in and out of the backcountry safely, you don't have to leave your phone on. And so you can extend the life of your phone from maybe one day or maybe one and a half days up to four or five days just by leaving it on airplane mode and navigating or doing whatever you need uh, sparingly. The next thing is my deodorant. Now this goes for a lot of toiletries actually. I have not been a backpacker with deodorant for years. And in fact, I call the outdoors my safe space to stink. We have a lot of rules, quote unquote, in society about cleanliness and hygiene. And there's good reason, I guess, for general society's public benefit to smell nice. However, on the trail, hey, live your life, be free, stink a little. Don't, you don't need to even waste your time with deodorant. And even if you're trying to impress, you know, a hiking partner out there, just uh, let them smell who you really are. I don't take a lot of soaps. I usually take a small thing of hand sanitizer and maybe a small solid bar of biodegradable soap. And that is what I use. And then I just bathe in creeks or lakes or anything like that if I'm really feeling the need to get clean. But deodorants and a lot of soaps and shampoos and things like that, just don't take them into the backcountry. You don't need them in your pack. Another popular thing out there to take is a big multi-tool. Um, I do think that it's good to have a knife, but to have these like cool, they're cool gifts. And so, you know, people have probably thought, oh, maybe you're, you're an outdoors person. You love the outdoors. Let's get you a nice, cool Leatherman or Gerber or whatever brand. Well, while they're great, the amount of uses that you actually have, unless you're like an angler or a hunter, then you just don't really need these in the backpacking setting. The only thing I ever need for backpacking is just a really simple lightweight knife. Something that I can like open packages with or cut slice a few veggies or something like that here and there. But I really don't need pliers. I don't need a corkscrew. I don't need screwdrivers. Or if I do need a screwdriver, I can literally just use one of the ends of my knife and then I'm good to go. This thing is heavy. These things weigh almost a pound. They're like 12 ounces, 14 ounces by themselves. So again, you can ditch that weight. You don't need it. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is just having a lot of extra clothes. Now it is important to be prepared out there and have the clothing that you need, but you don't need to be changing your clothes every day on the trail. So what I like to wear are a quick drying, nice pair of hiking pants that I don't need a second pair of. Even if these get wet, they will dry out quickly. And that's all I really need. Same thing goes for layers like this. This is my one layer that I wear all the time. I don't need to have, you know, three or four pairs of shirts for a three day backpacking trip. I have my one hiking shirt. That's like my quick dry shirt my one mid layer or kind of wool in, uh, or synthetic layer like this, my puffy jacket, my rain jacket, my pants. The only things that I do have extra of are underwear and socks. Now with underwear, I don't bring enough for every day. What I like to do is have two pairs of underwear total, pretty much no matter how many days I'm actually backpacking. I like to wear a pair of antimicrobial quick drying underwear that's great for hiking. I've been wearing ex officios for a long time and if I have two pair, I can hike in one pair and switch into another pair when it's time to go to bed at camp. And if I particularly have an egregious day and I'm really stinky and I just need to clean it, well, I'll just literally take those underwear into a creek and just rinse them out, wring them out and let them dry quickly and then they're ready to go for another day of use. Maybe two pairs of backup socks if you're in a really wet environment where you need to be regularly changing your socks. You can get away from that mentality that, 
oh, five day backpacking trip, I need five days worth of clothes. Well, that takes up a huge amount of space in your backpack and it's just unneeded weight. Be a little bit more liberated here on your backpacking and hiking trips and you will thank me for it. Okay, that's it for me. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have a list of things that you think are totally unnecessary, uh, you might be thinking of my Nalgene bottles that I'm still in love with and I'm still am attached to. Yes, I could lighten my load there too with my Nalgene bottles. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen, I'll see you later.